Hi, I'm Tom Zimmerman from the EMDR podcast. I want to talk about the intersection of EMDR and grief. It's a pretty common consultation question. And I think a lot of consultants are confused about, um, about how we might use EMDR around grief targets. And I want to start with the headline. I mean, the headline is obviously loss is traumatic. I mean, we, if we just think about it, think about our own experiences, and that loss does not have to be the death of someone. I mean, the endings of relationships can be um, incredibly wounding. And one of the things that's kind of worst about it in some ways is the grief, is the grief that goes along with um, letting somebody get close to us and then that not going the way we hoped or that not aligning with our best intentions. So grief and loss are wounding. Is it possible that certain aspects of that grief and loss may show up in ways that prevent us from adaptively making sense of it? Or what happens a lot of the time is that a grief process, it may take us this amount of time to get through, but with really good interventions and really good assistance. Um, and often we, we may need assistance to make grief more efficient. Um, we can dramatically help someone recover when they're completely stuck in a grief process. Um, of course, grief is a process. Of course, building a life and getting your feet back up, back under you once you've had a, um, a loss um, is going to take some time. And we're very, very clear, you know, a lot of, for most of us, the way we grieve is by crying, is letting ourselves go there, letting ourselves experience that loss. That's not what I'm talking about. With EMDR, you still have to grieve. EMDR does not spare you the need to grieve. But what it can do is it can help make sure that you're grieving efficiently. It can help remove the obstacles to grieving. And it shouldn't be much of a surprise that some of the biggest obstacles to grieving are the obstacles that show up in many other types of trauma um, recovery. And they, they are the obstacles that come from the most culturally saturated emotions. You know, those emotions connected with guilt, shame, blame, responsibility. So when grief is long lasting, it's unremitting, the client seems to be just hammering and hammering and hammering into the same loss at the same angle without any, without all of that distress and all of the tears actually producing anything. Look for guilt, shame, blame, responsibility. And in grief work, I always think about a very early EMDR client whose mom was actively passing away in hospice, passing away in the client's house. Um, this was the better part of 30 years before I saw this client. So this was a very, very long um, time that the client had been carrying this loss. And the, the trauma narrative goes kind of like this. He, he heard something in the night wasn't sure what it was, wasn't sure if it was his HVAC unit or, you know, air conditioning kicking on, and, um, and went back to sleep and woke up and found that his mom had passed. The story that he told himself about this loss is that very often he thinks if he would have gotten up, his mom would be alive today. This was 30 years ago. Right? This was a client that was actively dying in hospice that was not expected to live more than a few days or, or a week. Um, the death was completely expected. And that's how this client turned a loss, which was inevitable, right? Turned a loss into, I killed her. And really that's what happens with incredible ease when we have, when we introduce guilt, shame, blame, responsibility into grief targets that, where it's not ecologically appropriate. So when people have been carrying debilitating um, quality of life, ruined, you know, grief processes for decades, 
look for the guilt, shame, blame, responsibility. I almost guarantee you it's there. So there may be other things that, um, that can really interfere with the ability to grieve um, efficiently. When a family member or when someone witnesses someone die, that is a pretty objectively horrible thing for many people. There may be parts of that that are stored exactly in the places where we store trauma. And if there are intrusive or you know, parts of this loss that are stored as trauma, what that does is that it creates a little, you know, it, it creates a little bottleneck in our ability to not only grieve for this person, because the moment we access that trauma, things get very, very complicated, right? Because now we're not activating necessarily a memory of loss, um, or even sometimes to be able to get to any memory, we have to go through the trauma of that loss. We have to go through the raw sensory experience of that loss. So losses can be stored as trauma in the, in the limbic brain. And it's important to remove the traumatic components so that we can get access to grief. And if you're not sure what I mean by that, if you're not sure what I mean by having to go through the trauma to get access to, to adaptive, you know, positive information of which almost any type of making sense of a loss is going to require, think about a really, a really bad relationship ending you may have had. So before the relationship ending ended, you can think of the relationship as like a forest of trees and the trees are memories. And many of those memories may be good, many of those memories may be bad, but they're good, they're, they're good trees, they're bad trees, and there's, there's often a whole forest of them. After a relationship ends in a particularly difficult way, right, in a way that really does cause this kind of bottleneck, because you have to go through the trauma of the loss to access memory, every single tree feels the same. The good memories feel in some ways, maybe even worse than the bad ones. So this is something to look for in all kinds of, you know, grief processes that may benefit from processing the, the stuck points, the block points, is because we need access to the good memories. The only legacy that's to be made, the only way that we can carry, um, whether it's the death of a, a grandparent or whether it's you know, carrying the kind of legacy of a relationship that was very important to us, is to get access to the good stuff and get access to the good stuff directly and get access to the difficult stuff directly without having to go through the trauma of the loss. So one assessment question I may ask is uh, with a client that has some grief processes is, do you have access to the good memories? Are you able to access good memories? If not, you may really benefit from some grief focused EMDR or some trauma, you know, trauma um, loss focused EMDR so that you can get access to the good stuff because that's the only kind of workable sense. That's the only workable tribute that I think um, we can carry with any kind of ease.